And hello, and welcome back to uh, Play Anything I Want Friday Night. Uh, as you can see, I am back at the PlayStation 4, and we're doing some more Crimes and Punishment. Uh, Sherlock Holmes, Crimes and Punishment. So the last time I played this year was a little while ago, um, about a month ago, maybe a little longer. Uh, actually, probably a little longer than there. And uh, we did one case then, so I'm going to try to do another case today. Um, so yeah, so let's get into this. Let's go be Sherlock Holmes and solve a murder. Uh, yes, we already know about the autosave function. Okay, so, um, we got a look. We can see the cases that I am. Fate of Black Peter, these were the ones I did before. Here's the one I did, Bloodbath was the one I did the last time. And now we're on to the Abbey Range Affair. We're just going to go and we're going to continue. The Abbey Grange Affair. Let's see if we can solve who done it. The game is afoot, not a word. Into your clothes and come. The game is afoot. I'll wait for you in the sitting room. I've just received a note from Inspector Lestrade, a letter from the suburbs. He is in need of my presence. Whenever he has asked for my assistance, it has always turned out to be entirely justified. I fancy that every one of his cases has found its way into your collection. Uh, yes, they all seem worthy of... However, I regret your fatal habit of looking at everything from the point of view of a story instead of a scientific exercise. Oh, Holmes, you... I beg your pardon, I digress. It would be much better to examine this letter than to try to convince you. Okay. I am Mr. Holmes. Okay, let's go use the Peeping Tom telescope again. Let's see. What was it again? Was it the letter is on the table. Yeah, we'll you you should take it. X. There we go. Yep. Holmes. Seriously, dude. The letter is on Seriously. the table. Holmes. You should take a look. But. Oh, look. I agree with you, Toby, that Watson's shoe is preferable to Mrs. Hudson's cold cuts. The letter is on the table, Holmes. You should take oh, a look. Uh, he is going to bug me until I look at this letter. Where is the letter? The letter is on the table, Holmes. You should take a look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, actually, hold on. I need to go quickly. I need my controls. Yes, yes, okay. How do you play? There we go. Um, launch imagination. There's a third person, first person of you. Really? Oh, okay. Casebook, actions, open deduction space, help, you don't need help. Okay. Switch characters. Can't switch characters. There are no clues available yet. Oh well. Okay, so the letter is on the table. Where? This table? The letter is on the table, Holmes. You should take a look. Oh, table. Uh -huh. Anything else on the table? Yes, I know I'm being a pain. Okay, so let's go look at the letter. Uh, 221B Baker Street, London. Sherlock Holmes. Examine the address. I can tell from Lestrade's handwriting that he was in a hurry when he wrote this letter. Let's look at the seal. Wax seal. A wax seal with the monogram E.B. Hmm. Not Lestrade. Ooh, what do we got here? Brackenstall. The Brackenstall family coat of arms. 
Okay. Hey, dear Mr. Holmes, I should be very glad of your immediate assistance in what promises to be a most remarkable case. It is something quite in your line. Except for releasing the lady, I will see that everything is kept. Let's see. Ah, oh, there we go. Uh, as I have found it, but I beg you not to lose an instant, as it is difficult to leave Sir Eustace there. Yours faithfully, Inspector Lestrade. Okay. So, what is it, Holmes? Promising, as always. It appears to be a case of murder. Isn't it always? So you believe that Sir Eustace is dead? I should say so. Lestrade wouldn't have sent for me for less. His writing shows considerable agitation, and he is not an emotional man. These people belong to high society. The quality of the writing paper, the EB monogram, their coat of arms. The crime was committed before midnight. Holmes, how can you possibly tell? Well, it is all thanks to Lestrade. He wrote his letter at 3.30 in the morning. Imagine the chain of events before that. The local police had to be called in. Scotland Yard was notified. Lestrade himself had to make haste there, and finally compose the letter he sent to me. All of that makes for a fair night's work. It makes sense. Lestrade also speaks of the woman he released. That seems to indicate that she had been held somewhere during the crime. Much time has been wasted. Let us find a cab and go to Abbey Grange immediately. I live in hope of an interesting morning. Okay. So, let's see. Oops, let's see. Tasks. Investigate the murder at the Abbey Grange. Holmes receives an urgent late-night summons from Inspector Lestrade. Something is wrong at the Abbey Grange. It appears to be a case of murder. Okay. I don't have any evidence yet. Got a document. Dialogues. Okay. Uh, what do we got here? Chronicle. Okay. We already looked at that one. Oh, come on. Oh. Bloodbath. Blinkhorn knew of the Bencliffe intention. This is from last time. He knew of Bencliffe's intention to take all of the credit for a discovery of the Golden Knife. He devised a cunning plan that would not only eliminate his rival, but would reward him the fame of discovery. He used a handmade ice maker to create an ice made replica reproduction of the Golden Knife of Mithras. Carried it into the steam room in an ice bucket with champagne, and then after the murder, dropped the knife onto the floor, allowing it to dissolve into water. The rope is a fitting punishment. So I let him die. And harpoon, train whistle, silver cast. Other oh, tricks. Remember, I used the silver to make that. Probably not. And other character portraits. Okay. Now put this here. We need to go. There we go. Let's go to Abbey Grange. Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson, here you are. I'm very glad that you have come, but perhaps I should not have troubled you after all. And why is that? Lady Brackenstall has come to her senses, and she has given so clear an account of the affair that there is not much left for us to do. Do you remember that Lewisham gang of burglars? What, the three Randalls? Exactly. The father and two sons. It's their work. They stole a silver service which is of great value. Sir Eustace Brackenstall is dead, then? Yes. His head was knocked in with his own poker. A violent act of aggression. Yes, the poor lady. She has had a most dreadful experience. She was assaulted and tied to a chair. But oh, no. I think that you would best see her and hear her account of the facts. She is in the morning room with her maid, Teresa Wright. Where is the body of the deceased? In the dining room. We haven't touched anything. All right. I'm going to examine it. Very good, Watson. Okay. Wow. Okay. Let's go look at some pictures. Lord Ramsay Brackenstall. Isn't he a pleasant looking figure? 
And let's see. And who do we got here? We got Baron Linden Brackenstall. Oh, these guys are just so friendly. Let me guess. Something Brackenstall. Lord Brigham Brackenstall. I know. There's a door. Sir Warthen Brackenstall. Interesting how they all have different titles. Lord George Brackenstall. The Brackenstall family seems rather austere. Wasn't I just commenting on that? I could be Sherlock Holmes. Hat and coat. That's a door. Okay. And I'm guessing your door. Aha. See? I can make deductions too. Nothing here. Yeah, I'm making you do the okay. So let's talk to Lestrade. Lady Brackenstall awaits you in the morning room. Which way is the morning room? I have a map for this place. Uh, okay. Uh, it seems to be a robbery, which turns into a murder. Lord, Lady Brackenstall was assaulted and tied to a chair. Sir Eustace Brackenstall, which tried to resist, which tried to, who tried to resist is dead. His head was knocked in with his own poker. According to the Lady Brackenstall's words, it was the Lewisham gang of burglars, the three Randalls. Okay, is the morning room this way? Lady Brackenstall awaits you in the morning room. Uh, I guess not. Okay. You know, I would rather, like, go get evidence before I talk to somebody, but okay. Wow, he opens that door violently. Mr. Holmes, I am the wife oh, wow. of Sir Eustace Brackenstall. She was hit really we were hard, married wasn't she? only a year ago. Please accept my deepest condolences. I suppose that it is no use my attempting to conceal that our marriage has not been a happy one. I fear that all would tell you that, even if I were to attempt to deny it. Um, let's do our little uh, investigating thingy. Oh, we got a black eye. Fresh bruises. Oh, what do we got here? There was something. There we go. Pale cheeks. Gold brooch, kangaroo, and emu. Australian origin. Old bruises. Oh, that's not good. Nope. Wedding ring. Okay. Was there anything specific? Specific that was troubling you? He was not a nice man when he was drunk, and he suffered from dark moods, but nothing else. I see. Oh, crap. Um, let's see if I can do that again. You mentioned that your marriage was not a happy one. Was there anything specific that was troubling you? He was not a nice man when he was drunk. And he suffered from dark moods, but nothing else. The bruises on your hands are at least one week old. Your husband caused those bruises? Oh, do you? Yes, he did. He was very angry at the time. Out of control. Again. Sir Eustace was a drunkard. To be tied to such a man for life is worse than death. Okay, so what happened last night? Can you describe to me the events of yesterday evening? Is it really necessary? I have already told Inspector Lestrade all that happened. Yes, madam. It is. I will tell you then. Sir Eustace retired about half past ten. I sat in this room until after eleven, absorbed in a book. Before I went upstairs, I entered the dining room to fetch a candle and... Oh, God. Please, go on. As I approached the French window, I found myself face to face with an elderly, broad-shouldered man who had just stepped into the room. Close behind the first man, I saw two others. 
One of them struck me a savage blow with his fist and felled me unconscious to the ground. And then? When I came to myself, I found that they had secured me tightly to a dining room chair. It was at that instant my unfortunate husband entered the room. He fought with the intruders? Yes, I think he had heard them, for he was holding his stick. But they were three, and he eventually succumbed. One of them, the elder one, struck him a terrible blow with the poker. I fainted once more. When I opened my eyes, they had withdrawn. Then my brave Teresa came to my assistance. Okay, there's something missing. Did these three villains steal anything? Yes. I found that they had taken the silver from the sideboard, but you can see for yourself in the dining room. Your ladyship? Okay, so now I can look around the morning room. Uh, Lady Brackenstall, not quite 25, is from a wealthy Australian family. She's been married for a little more than a year. She has in all probability oops, suffered physical violence over the course of the last four nights, fortnight. The lady lives a solitary lifestyle, seldom venturing outside. Okay, inspect the dining room. I want to inspect this room. We're going to talk to Teresa. Teresa. I would like to hear your testimony. Certainly, sir. Okay, let's examine her. One of the neat things about this game is it uses about the same um, mechanic that um, uh, L.A. Noir does when you're questioning somebody, that you have the option of kind of calling them out on a lie, but then you have to have an evidence to back up the lie. Wrinkles. Approach there. Oops, over here. Vinegar smell. Resuscitation. Carry. There's something here. Here. Coffee stain. Oh, there's a coffee stain. Okay. Working hands. Okay. Tell me about last night. As I sat by my bedroom window, I saw three men in the moonlight down by the lodge gate. But I thought nothing of it at the time. Oh, if I'd known. It's amazing how consistent and they are with these stories. I went to bed. And it was more than an hour after that I heard my mistress scream. And down I ran, to find her tied to the chair and him on the floor with his head smashed. That's all I know. Okay. Not a lot of people that. We got a new person. Teresa is very attached to her mistress and has been known her for a considerable time. She's the only resident service at the Abbey Grange. Oops, I keep doing the wrong thing. Cooking for, serving, and nursing Lady Brackenstall. She would not hesitate to protect her in the event of any trouble. She's the only resident service known her for a considerable time, but wasn't the lady only married for a year? Oh, puppy painting. Okay, I don't think I can talk to you. Um, concentrate your attention on funny details. Others kind overlook. Okay. We're in Batman vision mode. Good up over to ah, okay. Scratches, ah. Mm. These scratches are most definitely made by the picture frame. A trapper's hut. I found a safe. This is Sir Eustace's safe. There may be something important inside. I must ask Lady Brackenstall to open it. Okay, well, let's look at the small table.
Anything else catching my eye in Batman mode? I'm saying that because in um, the the Batman Arkham games, Batman can go into that. Uh, okay, so let's. I can take the photograph. Okay, two women. This photograph of Lady Brackenstall and her maid Teresa was taken at a port, but which one? Curious. Wait, wait, ah. I'm doing this in front of her. Rock of Gibraltar, Adelaide, 1893. So the lady and her maid came from Australia a year and a half ago on this ship. Oh, nice one, Holmes. Can I, is that all I'm gonna get from the table? Okay. There's anything else that I'm missing. Um, let's go check out the dining room. Then we'll come back and talk to the lady. Anything I'm missing here? Pleasant. You oh, should examine the body so of Sir Eustace Brackenstall. You're the doctor. Why don't you examine it and tell me what you found? Okay, we've got some more paintings. A trapper's hut. No. Oh. So the one in the other room. Sometimes it's kind of odd. A trapper's hut. No, this A one. A trapper's hut. Really? You must really like these trapper's huts. Why is this... Is like a cloud of a green gas over there? The hunting scene. I am noticing a trend. Because it is really hard to get into... A hunter's over. cabin. I am very much noticing a trend here. Antique hunting weapons. The hunting scene. Let me guess. Sir Eustace liked hunting. And apparently I can't look at the other painting there. Sideboard. Okay. These wine bottles are expensive and mostly from France. Surprisingly, they did not tip them. What are we getting here? No. It's the same thing. Okay. Can this candlestick is valuable. It is interesting that it was not also stolen. Indeed it is. Uh, silverware box. An yeah. empty silverware box. It appears that the intruders have stolen the contents. Okay. Yes, but appearances can be deceptive. I think this whole thing is staged. Don't think there's anything else to look at here. Okay. I guess we should do this door. This door leads to the upstairs bedrooms. Apparently the criminals did not venture there. Sailor's knots. That's interesting. This rope was handled by the murderers. We need a scent hound to follow their trail. I will take it with me. Anything. Did I use the scent hound in the in the other game? I don't remember. This is the chair that Lady Brackenstall was tied to. Okay, not all information there. Wait, that one has arms on it. Is there any other chairs with arms? Okay, let's go look at the body. 
So, Watson, what have you learned from examining Sir Eustace's body? Well, I can confirm that the death was instant. Sir Eustace was facing his attacker when he received the blow to his head. There are no other apparent injuries. The head was cracked with the force of the blow. That must be the murder weapon. Quite a large stick, a formidable weapon. Barefoot, he had therefore been in bed and did not have time to fully dress. It is covered in blood. Sir Eustace might have struck his head upon it while falling from the blow. That is one possible explanation. Okay. So, there are... A fur trader's cabin. And let me ask. A I deer think... hunt. Mm hmm A fur trader's cabin. Oh, hello. It appears that the bell rope was cut by someone taller than me. A hunter scene. Really? The Brackenstall family appear to be preoccupied with hunting. Well, Eustace did, at least. Oh, yeah, glasses. Okay, it is really difficult to look at glass. This glass has some wine traces, but no visible beeswing. Beeswing? Oh, is that... There bee is beeswing at the bottom, as if the wine had not been decanted before being poured. Wait, so this one did not have a visible beeswing. This one did. This glass has some wine traces, but no visible beeswing. It is rather strange that only one of these glasses has dregs of beeswing inside it, while the other two are clear. A decanter standing next to the open bottle, an inseparable pair indeed. Oh, yes. Chateau Calon Ségur, French wine, Grand Cru. Okay, so let's take a look. Um, collect. Oh, Toby. <laughs> He's gonna be our scent dog. Um. Okay, so let's take a look at the evidence that we have. Uh, dialogue. Two glasses of trade. Okay, so we're found in the dining room. Okay, so that's something I could probably. I have to go talk to, um,. Lady Breckenstall about it. At the bell rope. Okay, so we have to use some analysis, which is the dog, and we have to ask her about the estate. And we have to ask her about this too. 
Uh, let's see, do I have anything here so far? Okay, so let's see. Two glasses, glass with these one. There are three people drinking wine out of the glasses. One of the three probably prefers wine. There are two people drinking wine out of the three's glasses. The remaining glass with the bees from the drugs from the other two glasses. Look at that. Uh, let's see. Dead body and fireplace grate. Uh, what could we do? Okay, and let's see. Band poker. Dead body. Yeah, it combines these here. Okay, so it could have been deadly accident. Goes off that way, or it could be poker blow. So we're not certain about that yet. Um, criminals identified from Australia? Nope. Bad behavior? Nope. Knotted rope? Nope. Okay. D selected. Okay. Violent behavior from Australia? Knotted rope? Nope. From Australia? Knotted rope? Nope. Okay, I think we're done with the deductions right now. And let us go talk. Oh, let's talk to Mr. Warren. Dr. The death Watson, I guess. was instant. That's all you have to tell me. Thank you. Let's go open the doors violently. And oh, what happened to a strad? Oh, he's over here. Looking out the window, wishing he could live in a house like this. I've searched outside for footprints without any luck. So I'm going to stand here and look mournfully out the window with my hand in there. Okay, so we are going to talk to you. We've got a couple things we need to ask you about. Um, let's ask about the three glasses. There are three glasses on the dining room table. I was wondering if. Oh, I forgot. When I came to myself the first time. Each of them had a glass in his hand. They might have been a father and his two sons. They talked together in whispers, and then they left. I don't believe her. Lady Brackenstall, could you open this wall safe? No, it is my husband's safe. I do not know the combination. We have to open it. Your ladyship? Okay. And let's talk to you. Please leave my Mary alone. She suffered so much, she deserves some rest. No, I can't tell if they have Australian accents or not. Okay, can I open? Let us try to open this safe. Oh. This okay. safe can be cracked. I only have to pay attention. The dial will vibrate when it is set to the correct number. Oh wait, okay. I was expecting my vib my uh, my controller to actually vibrate in my hands with this, but good 
going, Holmes? It is common practice to keep one's valuables in a safe behind a painting. It should not really pose a challenge for a criminal. But there be a medical report. Sir Eustace, your current physical and mental state is of great concern. There are several signs of hepatic decompensation. The last time we met, your eyes were bloodshot and your skin was tinged with yellow. There is a particular odor from your breath that is common in those suffering from liver damage. Then there are the lung abscesses that we have discussed. The leg cramps you have described to me are caused by an alteration to the nervous system, which in turn is caused by an excess of alcohol. That includes the tremors. Your liver seems excessively hard at the time of your examination, which is a sign of an evolving, an evolving cirrhosis. There are also signs of ascites, fluids in the perit peritoneal cavity, which are evident with your swollen stomach. The pain beneath your left rib indicates um, a pancreatic malady, which may lead to fatal and fulminant pancre pancreatitis. Your condition may pose a risk to others. Your excessive alcohol consumption lowers your self-control and heightens your aggression. I'm available to help you with this problem. There are a number of treatment options. Well. Okay, so I'd have to talk about that. Let's go talk to the wife again. I still think she's hiding stuff from me. Oh, what a horrible thing to have happened. Okay, so apparently a medical report found inside the morning room safe, which, is, which states that Sir Eustace Bracknell endured poor health. He suffered an addiction to alcohol and nerve disorder. So who do I, do I talk to? Oh. History of violence. Sir Eustace's doctor speaks of his violent behavior. Yes, Sir Eustace was an extremely violent man. A detestable human being, to be more precise. It is true that he once threw a decanter at me, and all because I dared to stand up to him in defense of my mistress. Sly devil. God forgive me that I should speak of him so now that he's dead, but a devil he was. If ever one walked the earth, we met him only 18 months ago. She'd only just arrived in London. Yes, it was her first voyage. She'd never been from home before. One her with his title and his money and his false London ways. If she made a mistake, she has paid for it, if ever a woman did. She doesn't have any friends here, so it was specially hard for her. I wonder what her family thinks. Uh, ooh, what do we got? We've got some new things here. Okay, so no personal life from Australia. No acquaintance. Lady Brackenstall married Sir Eustace shortly after arriving in England, and remained at home during that time. Uh, there is little possibility that she or made her acquainted with anyone in the country. Acquainted with a sailor. Lady is acquainted with someone from the Rock of Gibraltar. Where does he get that idea? Except for the fact that it was somebody who took the photograph. Um, come on. Yeah, it's being a little laggy. Man. Okay, we're going to go with that one. No, okay. Actually, wow. That's interesting. Let's go with this one. Yeah, okay. Let's see. I don't think I have anything else here yet. Oh, what a horrible thing to have happened. Please leave my Mary alone. Okay, so I wonder if I can talk to Watson about that. That's that. Okay. Violently open the doors. Now you're over here. Man. Okay, well, what do we have here? Sir Eustace's reputation. What do you know about Sir Eustace, Inspector? What was his reputation? A charming man when sober, but an absolute demon when he was drunk. In such moments, he was apparently capable of anything. Why, 
Once he splashed fuel on Lady Brackenstall's dog and set it alight. Another day really? threw a decanter of wine at Miss Wright's head. Hmm. The alcohol seemed to madden him. To the point that we were forced to intervene several times to avoid a scandal. This might be one of those cases where I kind of let the perpetrator I've searched go. outside for footprints without any luck. I'm gonna let the per I might let the perpetrator go because this guy was such a creep. That's it. This house feels rather sinister. I can't say that I like it here. Well, maybe you should get out of the room with all the hunting scenes and the dead animal heads, Watson. It's very nice over in the morning room. I highly recommend it. This is a very nice clock. Have I looked at this hunting scene picture yet? No, I haven't. Because it's not a hunting scene. Apparently, I can only look at hunting scenes. You want me to go up to the bedroom this time? This no. door leads to the upstairs bedrooms. Apparently, the criminals did not venture there. Yes, 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 okay. Oops, I'm kicking my body. Oops, oops. That guy's a jerk. Okay. So, oops, not that. Let's see what we need to do. Okay, so we have to collect Toby from Baker Street and follow the center. Okay, so let us. Can I open this door? I can. Ooh. We can go look around here. Yes, because that's what you should do with the crime scene, is open up the French doors. Why do the doors swing both ways? This is gonna be just kind of free roaming. Isn't that paper blown away? It's kind of windy out here. Ooh, there's a little cabin here. Maybe we should go take a look at that. Apparently, I can't. Oh, okay. Maybe I'll come back later. Maybe I have to go bring Toby and he'll go bring me in there. So let's go do that. Okay, let me go here. Let me go to our map. Let me go back to Baker Street. Come on. There we go. For some reason, I'm recognizing my. Baker Street. Toby! Hello. Can I talk to you about this medical report? Someone should take Toby for a walk. Hint, hint, hint. Is she still there? Yes. Holmes. Uh, of course, I'm the one that keeps looking in the telescope. Come on, Toby. 
We need the best nose in the British Empire on this case. Aww. I agree with you, Toby, that Watson's shoe is preferable to Mrs. Hudson's cold cuts. Is he gonna follow me? Okay. Oi. <laughs> okay, so I guess now we go back to the... Back to Abbey Grange, and this time I'll have Toby with me. Oh, yeah, there he is. Come on, pet the dog. Pet the puppy. You know you want to, Sherlock. Oh, you're not gonna pet the puppy? Search, Toby. I am the dog. This is awesome. Sniff, 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 sniff. Uh oh. Oh wait, there it is. Sniff, sniff, sniff. <laughs> I'm the dog. Oh. Call for oh. luck. Oh. Oh, this is endearing. He moves really strangely, but still, this is fun. Oh, was it really? Remember I was talking about the little uh, cabin? This is what happens when I poke around a lot before I actually progress to the next thing I need to do. Yeah, Toby's not exactly the fastest of animals. Oh, wait. Oh, the scent continues. <laughs> Sniff. Oh, oh. Oof, oof. The intruders oh. entered the shed for some reason when they were making off with the silverware. Okay, and now... they went this way. Come on, Toby, get through the grass. Okay, I think this is going to be my favorite part of tonight. This plane is Toby. And they dumped it down the well. Did Timmy fall down the well? <coughs> the scent leads to the well. I should check it. Good deduction, Holmes. Okay, oh, and then it continues. Toby, the only thing I really wish was that you were just a little bit faster. Then it comes over here to the wall. Sniff. I like how I say sniff any worse. The intruder's trail is lost behind this wall. The criminals left the house through the French window. They walked to the shed, then across to the well, before fleeing by climbing over the wall. I wonder why they chose such a winding route. Okay, so, good boy. Brave Toby, the best nose in the British Empire. Hmm, okay, Here, let's go back and look at the well. Sherlock Holmes is not very fast either. Okay, we're going to open the well. And we're going to examine inside the well. Uh, There's down. something so glittering far. at the bottom there, but how can I reach it? Well, it looks like 
examine the bucket before mm. I do anything. The bucket can be easily removed. Okay, remove the bucket then. I need a hook. The wheel handle is old and rusty. It seems to be used infrequently. If only I had something with which I could lift that object. Completed, okay. Check this, okay. Um, collect Toby and follow, okay. So there we go. Okay, so I need to find a hook somewhere. Let's go check out the little cottage. Look inside the shed. Oh look, a hook. This hook might be useful. I wonder what I could use it for. Bags of seed. Some empty bags were recently moved. Suitcase. This old suitcase sounds hollow. It must be empty. Nice. Small gardening tools. Nothing of great interest. I do like the fact that there's like red herrings for things. Grabby arm game. Oh, oh, Silverware. The, um, the this is bag. hardly a coincidence. <laughs> I'm gonna take the fork. Yep, there we go. The Brackenstall coat of arms. It appears that we have found the stolen silverware. Who's going, Holmes? Good going, Toby. Okay, so silverware. Now, oh, Inspector's Tale. Okay. Imitated robbery. I kind of lean towards the imitated robbery. Which doesn't actually connect with. Let's see. I don't know, see. Hmm. Okay, so we don't have anything with that yet. Okay, knotted rope. Nothing there yet. Okay. We're making progress on this. Ah, uh, let's see. Apparently I didn't finish inspecting the crime scene in the uh, dining room.
Inspector, I have recovered the stolen silverware. You are a wizard, Mr. Holmes. And where is it? In the garden well. Excuse me? Unique, isn't it? Rather absurd. What is the point of stealing silverware and then throwing it down into a well? Perhaps it was used as a temporary hiding place. Or simply the thieves wanted to get rid of it. It is up to us to solve this mystery. We found your mistress's silverware. Oh, that's good news. You really are as clever as they say. Indeed. Hmm. We found your silverware, Lady Brackenstall. It had not been taken very far. Is that true? I am very thankful to you, Mr. Holmes. Your ladyship. Huh. Okay. Apparently we still have this. Okay. Holmes, don't look at me like that. I don't know what to think about all. Oh, maybe I have to go back. Oh, you know what? Okay, let's do this. Let's go back to Baker Street. And let's see if I can use the rope on the, um, my workshop table. Door to be. You're so cute. I like the fact that in the loading screen it allows me to, like, peruse my casebook or go into the deductions. Um, it's kind of a nice way of kind of using that time while it's loading in the background. Of the fast of the games. Well, Holmes, do you have a lead? Dr. Watson, it's Mr. Isa Whitney. He says it's urgent. Isn't that the fellow we found in the opium den while I was undercover there? Or am I mistaken? Yes, the gentleman whom I wrote about in The Man with a Twisted Lip. But I must go. This addiction of his causes irreversible damage. In that case, I shall continue the investigation alone. I hope that you'll tell me everything when I return. Okay. Brave Toby. Good the boy, best Toby. nose in the British Empire. Analysis. Okay, here we go. Let's examine the rope. Let us see how the rope was cut. The fibers at the end of the rope are smoothly cut. Let us try to find out what tool was used to cut the rope. Let's use the scissors. And... and... You know what? Snip. Cut. The fibers from this cut appear to be different. Okay. Let's grab a knife. If I cut the rope with a knife, it matches the original. With a knife. Sharp knife to the knotted rope. And what deduction does that give me? The rope was cut was cut once with a sharp knife and tied quickly in sailor's knots. That could indicate that an intruder had a sailor's background. Which leads me to I don't know where I got the deduction from, but we're going to use that one right now. Okay. Okay, so I completed those. Inspect the room where... Okay.
Brave Toby. The best nose in the British Empire. Oh, that's waters here. Murder in the... Ah. A, a high, colossal, okay, murder in the Roman bath. A colossal scandal in high society. The well-known and remarkable archaeologist, the pride of our nation, Sir Rodney Bancliffe, has been found murdered. The crime took place at the Roman baths in Strand Lane. The location of the archaeologist's archaeologist most recent research. What is most truly shocking is that the murder of Sir Rodney was at the hand of his former friend and partner, Percival Blinkhorn. The death sentence is the only possible punishment for this breed of villain. My cross resentment. Sherlock, dear brother, you have made the most terrible mistake once again. Are you quite aware of the fact that the Empire is at the brink of international conflict? How could you pass the incredibly sensitive case to those feather-brained Scotland Yard bobbies? Very well. Yes, they have caught the criminals, but have you not read the newspapers? The great fuss that has risen around it, they are generalizing all Mexicans. As you may know, the Empire's arrangements with a great many varied and loyal Mexican enterprises. You should think about that. That's from the, um, uh, the train case that I was doing. Um, obviously, I haven't looked at these words. A Harpooner's Revenge. The grotesque murder of the former Captain Peter Carraway, Carey, known in private as Black Peter, has been resolved. The evidence that Scotland Yard received from a trustworthy source was more than sufficient to conclude that the murderer of Peter Carey was Pablo Coventreiro, one of Carey's former harpooners. However, lawful justice could not be awarded. Coventreo was found dead of natural causes, possibly from his remorse at committing such a terrible crime. This is where I keep my post. I have to remember to check that regularly. My archive. I can always consult with it if needed. My archive. I can always consult with it if needed. Apparently, I do not need to. My archive. I can with always it. consult with. Let's go. Poker around Swanson's room. Watson keeps a very neat room. Oh, there's the uh there's the knife. Make sure the harpoon's in here somewhere too. Okay, so let's go. Hmm. So it looks like the thing that I need to do is I need to go take this here. We need to go back to inspect the crime scene in the dining room. I don't though. What else is there to do? Okay, back to Abbey Grange. Okay, so we're back here again. We looked at the picture, we looked at the clock, and let's go. Okay, so. Oh, what a horrible thing to have happened. I haven't examined the stable yet. Family business booming. The Randall gang is back on the street. Less than a fortnight ago, this infamous family of burglars, the Randalls as they are known, made their reappearance by way of a brutal but successful intrusion into one of the wealthier homes in Sydenham. The police are already on their trail. However, the details of the crime are being kept confidential, including that of the name of the victim. A witness is able to provide a precise description of all three men, and this will surely give the police a chance to complete their profile on this family of delinquents. We would take the liberty of reminding our esteemed readers about this highly dangerous ban, and to provide the full description as it is available at this moment. The gang has been in business for some considerable time, being a family of three, a father and his two sons. The elder, Jack Randall, is a man in his 40s and already gray-haired while of average height and build. Being the mastermind behind the burglaries, he retains control over his sons, both of whom are close in age, very different in appearance. The first son, William Randall, is tall and broad-shouldered with a small, disproportionate head. 
The younger brother, Melvin Randall, is of somewhat weaker constitution and is and he is as skinny as a rake. The gang is wanted not only for their frequent thefts and break-ins, but for the exceptionally brutal pirate career they enjoyed before returning to England. Be alert, and may your valuables stay safe. The description of the Randall gang provided by Lady Brackenstall is identical to the one in the Times article. Well, yeah, okay. Uh, it's faked and the whole story in yes. Oh, look at that. Sir Eustace was murdered by the one person who was visiting that night. It is he who tied up Lady Brackenstall. He is tall and strong. Wow, I'm making a lot of connections here. Uh, the person who was visiting that was probably a sailor. Look for a sailor. Okay. So let's see here. Okay, so that seems to be locked into place. Okay. Okay, so we need to go back to the dining room because apparently I'm not done there yet. That? Oh, coins. Antique coins, possibly of value, but they're scattered without care. Okay, so let's go back to the crime scene because apparently I am missing something there. here. Okay, let's go back. Okay, so okay, here we go. A bottle of wine is missing here. There we the go. The criminals did not thoroughly ransack the house. They only took a little silverware. There we go. That's the one thing I was missing. Okay. So now, I believe... Okay, search for possible sailor suspects. So, I think what I need to do now is... I Okay, yeah, so I need to search archives, the rocket or bolter. Excellent. This here is that I'm, I am streaming this over Wi-Fi. I know it's not the best. I, unfortunately, though, my PlayStation is downstairs, and I don't want to be running a hundred feet of Ethernet cable. Watson, you're back. Welcome back. What should we do next, Holmes? Well, I'm going to go over here and pet my dog. Brave Toby, the best nose in the British Empire. Okay, so let's see here. Let's start with the books. Search Rock of Gibraltar. 1893. Um, um, then eighteen eighty three. Um, oh, here we go. Oh, there we go. Arts and Economic Science, Technology, History, Medicine. Okay, no, it's not a problem. Let's go right here. And secret chemistry, poisons, wounds and injuries, martial arts, marks and symbols. Okay. Okay, so we need to jump up to 1893. Here we go. My phone's buzzing. Sorry about that. Nothing important. I don't even know why I bother checking. It's not like anybody ever looks for me. Um, there's the mummy. We're back in the same year here. Okay, Rock of Gibraltar's arrival. 
Arrival of the Rock of Gibraltar. A ship returned. The Rock of Gibraltar, a bulk carrier from the Adelaide Southampton London line, Cunard Building, Jane Street, London, has returned from a six month voyage through India, New Zealand, and Australia. The ship brought to England Miss Mary Fraser, the heiress of the Fraser family, owning land and tin mines in Australia. This reportedly beautiful young lady is presently engaged as her Eustace Brackenstall, one of the wealthiest gentlemen in Kent. Here it is. Thank you. I've already read it. I need to read it again. The shipping company, the Adelaide Southampton London Line, and its address. Interesting. It must be the place where they keep the records, including the one for the crew of the Rock of Gibraltar. I think that if you pretend you're from Scotland Yard, they'll give it to you without any problems. But I have another solution. I'll call in the specialist. Okay. Uh, okay, we can find the clue list there. Okay. So, what am I doing? Huh? Calling in what specialist? What am I doing? Watson, I need Wiggins. Is he anywhere nearby? He's right across the street. You can give him a sign from the window. Ah, the Irregulars. Call Wiggins. Hey, Wiggins! Wiggins, could you come upstairs, please? That's very subtle, Holmes. Very subtle. At your service, Mr. Holmes. I need a register, my young friend. If you could borrow it, there will be half a guinea for every one of you. I need the crew list of the Rock of Gibraltar in 1893 and their current employment. I'm straight on it, Mr. Holmes. Do you really think they'll find it, Holmes? My secret police is better than the Yard in many ways. Three hours later. Here it is, Mr. Holmes. But we can't take it back. It's too risky. Put it on the table. I'll take care of it. Good work, young Wiggins. Here's a half a guinea for you. Oh, let's see. Can I go pay him? I left it right on the table for you, sir. Yeah, but I want to give you money. Let's see. This table or this table? Because he has a lot of tables in here. There we go. Examine the register. This list shows the senior officers of the Rock of Gibraltar, on which Lady Brackenstall and her maid made their voyage. Lady Brackenstall does not know anyone in England. This must mean that someone on this list is our mysterious visitor. And these are the lists of the senior officers of the Adelaide Southampton London Line ships. Let us find out who was in London upon November the 7th. Okay, so... Oh wow, okay, there are a lot of different... This list shows the senior officers of the Rock of Gibraltar, on which Lady Brackenstall and her maid made their voyage. Lady Brackenstall does not know anyone in England. This must mean that someone on this list is our mysterious visitor. Uh, okay, I swear you need... Okay, so we have... James Talcott. No. Um, southward. Oh, here we go. Okay, so, but he arrived after the murder. Okay. Okay, I'm kind of confused by how, where this information is coming from, but okay. Oh, wait, that goes back. Oh, no. Okay, so anybody on this list is not, can't work. Because they were at sea. Okay, so... Okay, so not you're at sea at that time. Um, oh, wait, okay, so you were... Okay, so you may have been London at this time here, okay. So we have the Bass Rock. And, okay, so yeah, it has to be you.
Okay, so we have Jack Crocker. Okay, there's a Jack Crocker. Captain. Um, Chalmers, no. Peter Davison, no. Neil Marcus, no. George Stewart, no. Frank Wilkie Murdoch, no. I do not think that this sailor has any connection to the case. Oh, let me. Mr. Jack Crocker was in London upon the date of the crime, and he is due to depart in two days. Dun dun dun. Okay. Okay. So. Okay. Um. Pitchford, Sanders. Blender Walker. This officer is still at sea, therefore he cannot be involved. Okay, so I can just kind of continue crossing them up. Um, this officer is still at sea, therefore he cannot be involved. I already figured it out, but I guess I have to work my way through the um, the mechanics of the game. No, Talcott, no, Southward. This officer is still at sea, therefore he cannot be involved. And you're also this at officer sea. is still at sea, therefore he cannot be involved. Uh, let's see. Nathan Jacobs, no. Graham, no. Charles Chip. This officer was on a ship that sailed half a month ago. He wasn't in London at the time of the crime. And same thing with Mr. Partlet. This officer was on a ship that sailed half a month ago. He wasn't in London at the time of the crime. Captain Jack Crocker is our mysterious visitor. He was the only one around at the time of the murder. Yeah, I didn't need to do all the mechanics to figure that out. Okay. Call Crocker to confront him. Okay. You know what I kind of like this about this? This Crocker. Thing? Do you think... It would be interesting to meet him. Our young friend should be able to find him. What I like about this game is that, because, like, the last case was kind of, like, twisty and strange, uh, dealing with, um, the, the Greek myths and a lot of different kind of puzzles to solve there. And then there's this one, which is relatively straightforward. Uh, it's kind of a nice little refreshing thing. Mr. Wiggins, Wiggins, could you find a way to bring this Captain Crocker here to us? Oh, this here? is so classic Sherlock Holmes, Holmes, that could be dangerous. No problem, Mr. Holmes. Sometime later. This is so classic Holmes, actually. I, there's so many of the stories where he basically brings them to 221B. Mr. Holmes, I was informed that you were looking for me, and I'd like to know why. Yes, it is important that we talk. You will soon understand why. So classic Holmes. Um, let's do our little uh, Holmes magic, which I love. Clear look. Honest. Okay. Big bustly beard. Uh, okay, nothing but the hat. Let's continue. Oh, wait, we got here. Strong build. Oops. Newspaper ink. Boots. Okay, so I missed something. And here somewhere. Okay, so it's in between strong build.
Let's see. Oh, here we go. Sea Knight. Aha! You are acquainted with Lady Mary Brackenstall, are you not? Yes, I think I do remember her from when I was first officer, but I still don't see... It seems your relationship went beyond that of mere passenger and first officer. How dare you? Indeed, how reckless a feeling is love, particularly if one is prepared to commit a murder in its name. Explain yourself this instant. You are aware that the murder made the headlines of the morning press. You read the newspaper report, but to your dismay, found it much fabricated. Once you learned that I wanted to see you, you came straight away. You needed to know what I had found. You... and what do you know? That evening, you were with Lady Brackenstall, despite the danger. I'm not afraid, Mr. Holmes. Besides, all of this is just guesswork. You would be right, if there was no evidence. What, then? You tied her up. Lady Brackenstall was tied to a chair on the night of the murder. And it was you who tied her up. You call that evidence? Yes, as she was tied with a sailor's knot. Your handiwork. So, it's a sailor who's done it. That proves nothing, Mr. Holmes. I'm not the only sailor in London right now. Your theory is flawed, anyway. On the night of the murder, I was aboard the Sharp. I was supervising the repair of a porthole. At night? It was an emergency. There was a leak. You can ask the ship's carpenter. He can confirm. I'm sure that he can. Perfect. In that case, we have nothing more to talk about. Good evening, gentlemen. Holmes, what should we do now? Would you like to check his alibi? No. There is no doubt that these men will testify in his favor, and there will be no way to check. So, what then? So, we must work with what we have. We have all the puzzle pieces. Now I understand why you dissected the bell rope. Okay, Teresa. So I met everybody I need to for this case. Okay, Crocker is a fine man of the sea, aged in his forties. He is a capable, honest man, and well educated despite not being very wealthy. He was in haste and, and still he read the morning newspaper and cleaned his boots before heading out. Okay. Yes, my cough's not happy at me. Oh well. Deal with it. Okay. Yes. Okay, so let's do our deductions. Okay, Captain Crocker and Crocker's statement. Crocker is lying, his involvement is clear. He appeared as soon as he heard that I was looking for him, thus signaling his guilt. Um he had a confident demeanor. That doesn't work. The, okay. Okay, the captain is the killer. Sir Eustace was murdered by one person who was visiting that night. The murderer is tall and agile and a high-ranking sailor. Arrest Captain Crocker. Jack Crocker is a murderer, and you will bring him and his accomplice, Lady Brackensall, to justice. Absolve Captain Crocker. The murder was committed in self-defense. Jack Crocker defended a woman against a violent and dipsomaniacal man. The mystery is solved, but you decided to keep it secret. There is no need to inform the police. Yeah, as I said, I was probably not going to be arresting this guy. That good. Brackensall was a dick. Um... And now he's dead, so Lady Brackensall gets all of his money and the estates. She has all of her money, and now she can marry the captain, and I'm fine with that. Confirm your moral choice? Yes. Wiggins, could you ask Mr. Crocker to come here again, please? Right away! Barely an hour has passed. I 
Why did you make me come here again, Mr. Holmes? It is over. I know that it was you who killed Sir Eustace Brackenstall. What? I know, because of the height at which the rope was cut. The knife used was a sea knife. The knots were sailor's knots. And not least, the sheer force that was put behind the killing blow. And because you are the only one who knows Lady Mary Brackenstall in London. And because you love her. Aww. It's true. It is time for you to tell us the whole truth. I admit that I loved Mary madly from the first day that I met her. But I never did come to visit her. For I believed that she was in a happy... I was in... ...sane with rage. I was due to set sail for six months away. I wanted only to see her again. But it turned into a damnable nightmare when he barged in. He dared raise his hand to her. He! He was not even worthy of licking her boots. Oh, I regret nothing. I admit I killed the monster out of love for her. She will forgive me if she is able. Lady Brackenstall already forgave you. She said nothing. Mary! Aww. But that makes her an accomplice as well as her maid. It places her in danger yet again. Mr. Holmes. You would not have managed to protect her. Till I die, do you hear me? Here is a letter that sets everything clear. And it is the one that should be disclosed to the police. I am the only culprit. Mary had nothing to do with it. Now it is time to end this. Wait. Oh, oh, crap. No. Watson. Hold on. Um. It's over, Holmes. We can do nothing for him now. Here is a case that didn't end as I had expected. It is entirely my fault. What? I know that you have already drafted a summary of the case. You have my permission for its publication, if you so wish. Whoa, whoa. I'll think about it, Holmes. Can I? Holmes! Whatever is going on here? That is Sir Eustace's killer. He has performed his own brand of justice. My God! But why did you not call me? Oh. I apologize. Here is his letter of confession. So much drama. You have no idea. No. Oh. Wait. Choose another ending. Yes. <laughs> I want to see if I can catch him. I don't want him to die. This is a pretty straightforward case. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do for the next hour. Should I start another case? Okay. Okay, so let's see if we can catch the... Wiggins, could you right? Okay, so we're gonna skip through the conversation because we've already done this. It's the same. Why did you make me come here again, Mr. Holmes? Come on. What? I know, and because it's true, I admit that I was. Oh, I regret not. Lady Brackenstall already forgave you, Mary. Okay. But that makes her an accomplice as well as her maid. It places her in danger Same thing with yet the again. Games. Trying to get the Mr. Holmes, kind of you difficult. would not have managed to protect her. Till I die, do you hear me? Now it is time to end this. Good going, Holmes. Yeah, there's some twitch things that happen in this game. Please too, forgive me, Captain Crocker. I wish oh. only to test your sincerity, and your words and deeds have we far exceeded my expectations. See here, Captain Crocker. We'll do this in due form of law. You are the prisoner. Watson, you are a British jury. Captain Crocker, 
The evidence shows that you acted without premeditation and used reasonable force to protect an innocent victim from her husband's brutality. Your devotion pushed you to attempt to kill yourself in order to protect the one you love. Now, what say you, gentlemen of the jury? Not guilty, my lord. <laughs> vox populi, vox dei. You are acquitted, Captain Crocker. So long as the law does not find some other victim, you are safe from me. Mr. Holmes. It is a great responsibility that I take upon myself, but I will give Lestrade an excellent lead, and if he can't avail himself of it, I can do no more. Come back to your lady in a year, and may her future and yours justify us in the judgment which we have pronounced this night. Inspector, I'm afraid that the murderers have escaped us. What? Do you mean to tell me that you failed? Never thought I'd live to see the day. I mentioned the murderers, not the case. It is obvious that the crime was committed by three criminals who cannot be the Randalls. You really think so? You only need to find a gang of three thugs wandering around. I can trust you to do that. If they exist, I'll catch them. You'll find someone, I have no doubt of it. Goodbye, Inspector. There we go. Um, clues found. The captain is the killer. Absolved. Sir Eustace was murdered by Captain Jack Crocker, who was visiting Lady Brackensall that night. They staged it as a robbery by the Randall gang. Crocker used a sea knife to cut the bell rope to tie the lady and then hid the silverware in the well. Jack Crocker defended a woman against a violent and dipsomaniacal man. You have decided to keep it a secret. So we're going to check my conclusion. Yay, it's green. I've had all the clues. Um, we are going to accept this decision. Warning, you are about to finish the case. The save files for this case will be removed. Press no if you would like to select another moral choice. Um, press yes if you agree with the choice you have made and are ready to start a new chapter. Personality ranking, neutral. I think last time I was like lawful, wasn't I? Continue. Okay, so I think box populi, box day. Okay, so let's. I don't want to the Q's Garden Drama. That'll be the next thing we'll play. Not next week though. Um, and I think actually I'm going to call it a night here. I haven't really had anybody on watching the stream, so. Um, so it's not like I'm really ending it anytime early. Um, and this just makes it kind of a good video to put up onto YouTube there. So yes, this video will be archived onto YouTube like my normally are at um, uh, youtube.com slash user slash fscornia. And uh, so this has been Friday Night Play What I Want, uh, Sherlock Holmes, Crimes and Punishment. My next stream is going to be Sunday night, um, back to Mass Effect 1. And then next Tuesday we will go back to um, either one on the PlayStation 4. So thank you for watching and have a nice evening.